In this video, we will talk about logistic differential equation. So this logistic differential equation is basically a type of equation that's very similar to the population growth. Notice that you actually have the population growth here, this Kp. Um, now you have this extra term. Now what exactly is this extra term? Well, um, this M is what we're going to call the carrying capacity. So um, if you think about it, it's if you have some sort of population in some sort of environment, M here is going to be the maximum amount that this particular environment can support. It cannot do anything else. So it can only if it can only do a maximum of a, of a thousand people, then that's going to be the maximum. And then if not, uh, some things are going to happen. So if you think about it this way, um, if this is the graph here M is my carrying capacity, what this basically says, it kind of looks like this. So it's going to be increasing, increasing, but then when it starts getting to the um, to this carrying capacity, it's just going to kind of level off. Okay, so that's the maximum that it can really do. Um, now, if you really take a little, uh, a, a second to kind of look at it, um, if P is small, notice that this P over M uh, term, um, this thing is just going to go to zero, that because m is going to be much larger than p, so that goes to zero, and uh, basically our differential equation is just going to be kp, okay, which is basically the solution to what we solved in the previous video, okay, so we can model the population using this equation, okay, so that's only if p was small, however, if p is slowly approaching m, okay, so if p is getting closer and closer to m, then you can say that P over M is going to go to 1, okay? Because if P is getting closer to uh, the, so if M is 1,000 or the carrying capacity is 1,000 and we have approximately 1,000 people, then this thing is going to go to 1 and what happens to this term? Well, this term is just going to go to 0, okay? So that means DP, the change of, uh, of the population with respect to time is now going to go to 0, okay? So there's going to be no more, okay? It cannot do any more. And if P tends to exceed the number of um, uh, the number of carrying capacity, well, then you can just imagine that this whole thing is going to be positive, much larger than one, which is now going to give me a negative number. So then the population, the rate of change with respect to time, is going to be negative. Okay, which basically means that the population now is increase is decreasing. Okay, so you can kind of uh, intuitively see why this um, differential equation works. Now, the whole point of this is that we're going to try to solve for some sort of analytic solution. So let's try to figure out what this is. So let's write the solution to this. So here's a solution. Okay, and the solution is a little bit long, um, but it's really worthwhile at the end. And then after we do the solution, we'll do a couple of examples. Okay, so we start off with the logistic equation. So dp over dt is equal to kp, uh, 1 minus p over m. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to do separation of variables. I'm going to multiply by dt to both sides. So multiply by dt, multiply by dt, this goes away. So dp is equal to kp1 minus p over m dt, okay? And now what we want to do, let's go ahead and move this p1 minus p over m to the other side. Uh, p1 minus p over m, okay? So this is going to go away. So all I'm left with is just 1 over p1 minus p over m dp is equal to, and I'm left with a k dt, okay? So notice that here m is just going to be a constant. Um, all we're really looking at is for p. Um, p is unknown to us. Um, and also um, k, notice that there's no t, but k is just a constant that we can just integrate. So imagine that it was just 2 or 3. Now this is going to be a little bit weird to look at. So what I'm actually going to be doing, I'm going to multiply this whole thing by m. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. Um, let me go ahead and, and put it in a different color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by m over m, which basically what it's doing is you're multiplying it by a factor of 1. Okay, so when I multiply this by m, on the top I'm going to have an m, on the bottom I'm going to have p times m, 1 minus p over m dp, and then this guy, I'm just going to leave it by itself. Now, you're probably wondering, why am I multiplying it by m? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute just this m to both of them. I'm going to keep the p on the outside. Okay. So what I'm going to have now is going to be um, 
m over p. When I distribute this m here, I'm just going to have an m. When I distribute this m to the second one, the m's cancel out and I have a minus p. Okay, then I have a dp is equal to k dt. Okay, so notice that by multiplying it by m over m, I actually was able to get rid of this nasty fraction and I actually have something that's a little bit easier to work with. Okay, um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take the integral of this guy. Okay, so I'm going to take the integral, I'm going to take the integral. Okay, all right, so now what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to go ahead and, and solve for this. Now, this guy. Um, you can actually use partial fractions, okay? So here's going to be a partial fraction decomposition, okay? So we're going to leave it like this. So we're just going to write it as this. Let me make a little bit more space. Um, we're going to have the integral of m over p, m minus p, dp, is equal to, the integral of k is just going to be k, we're just slapping a t next to it. And then we're going to have a plus c. Okay, and now all we have to do is figure out what this thing is. Okay, so well, let's use partial fraction decomposition. Okay, so I'm just going to look at the integral of m over p, m minus p dp. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the partial fraction decomposition of this guy. And all that's going to be is a over p um, plus uh, b over m minus p. Okay. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to make it look like that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to multiply this guy by m minus p. Multiply this guy by m minus p. This guy I'm going to multiply it by p. And this I'm going to multiply by p. So we have m over p m minus p is equal to a times m minus p, p m minus p, uh, and then plus b p over p m minus p okay now notice that the denominators now are the same so we can just equate the numerators so i'm going to have let me distribute it a m minus a p plus b p okay all right and now what i'm going to do i have m is equal to i have this a m then minus i'm going to just i'm going to factor out this a okay i'm going to factor out the p so i'm going to have just a plus p oh that's wrong <laughs> i'm gonna have let me write it like this uh plus negative a plus b times p okay and now all i have to do is just equate um uh the values notice that here this guy i'm going to equate it to this this is very easy just this is just going to be a equals one okay and then this guy i'm going to equate it with whatever's in p has a p nothing has a p so it's going to be a my negative a plus b equals zero i'm going to plug in one there negative one plus b is equal to zero so b is equal to one so basically the partial fraction decomposition of this guy is going to be the integral of m over p m minus p dp is going to be equal to the integral of this first part okay which is just a a over p is just one over p and then plus b, which is also 1, 1 over m minus p, uh, dp, okay? So now I know what the partial fraction decomposition is of this. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it in back into here. So now I'm going to go back to my equation. Let's write it again. So it's going to be the integral of m over p, m minus p, dp, is equal to uh, this guy, kt plus c. Okay, plus C. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to plug this circled part right there. So I'm going to have the integral of 1 over P plus 1 over M minus P dP is equal to KT plus C. Okay, now let me just go ahead and integrate this. So this is going to be the natural log of absolute value of P. Plus, notice that I'm taking the antiderivative with respect to negative P. So this is going to be uh, a negative natural log of the absolute value of m minus p this is just basically a u substitution is equal to kt plus c okay um, now what i'm going to do um, um, i'm going to go ahead and just um, maybe factor out a negative okay so i'm going to factor out a negative so i'm going to have negative one and then i'm going to have negative ln absolute value of p plus ln absolute value m minus p 
uh, equals kt plus c. All right, and now what I'm going to do with that negative, I'm going to move it to the other side. Okay, so I'm going to divide it out. Okay, so I'm going to have negative ln of p, absolute value of p, plus ln of m minus p um, is equal to dividing this negative over. So if I divide this negative, I'm going to have negative kt. And then this thing is just going to be another constant plus c. Even if I multiply it by a negative, it's still going to be another constant. Okay, let me switch these two guys around. So I'm going to have ln of absolute value m minus p minus ln absolute value of p. So I just switched these two guys around, negative kt plus c. Okay, now some of the properties of logarithms, I can go ahead and divide this when you have a minus. So you have natural log of the absolute value of m minus p over p is equal to um, uh, negative kt plus c. And now what I'm going to do to get rid of that ln, I'm going to take the exponential, so I'm going to exponentiate this guy. And what I'm going to have is just the absolute value of m minus p over p is equal to uh, e to the negative kt plus c. Okay, so remember what we can do with that. I have m minus p over p is equal to, I can write it as, so this guy right here can be e to the negative kt times e to the c, which is basically just a constant. Let me just call it a. Okay, so it's going to be a e to the negative kt. All right, now all I'm left with is just this thing, okay? Now, we're going to drop the absolute values. m minus p over p is equal to a e to the negative kt because this can be positive or negative. An absolute value can have positive or negatives. But a positive or negative a value is just any constant, so I'm just going to still call it a, okay? I can divide these two guys by p, so I'm going to have m over p minus p over p. Just breaking up the fraction gives me a e to the negative kt. Uh, this is going to be m over p minus 1 equals a e to the negative kt. I'm going to add the 1 over, so let me write it over here. So I'm going to have m over p is equal to a, oh, let me write it, 1 plus a e to the negative kt. Okay, and now all I have to do is kind of just cross multiply. Okay, so if I put that over 1 and I cross multiply, I'm going to have that p times 1 plus a e to the negative kt is equal to m. And then I just divide this guy over. So p is equal to m over 1 plus a e to the negative kt. Wow, that was a lot of work. Okay. But that is going to be the solution. So here is my solution. Okay. Now you might be wondering, what is a? So what is a? Okay, well, what A is going to be is going to be the following thing. So go back to this M minus P over P is equal to A e to the negative KT. Well, let's say what, ha what happens when at T equals zero. So at T equals zero, what we're going to have is A e to the negative K times zero, which is just going to give us, well, this is going to be E to the zero, which is just one. One times A is going to give me A. So A equals to this guy, M minus P over P. Now M is just a constant. P at T equals zero, you're gonna have an initial population, P zero. So P zero is basically gonna be my initial population. Okay, so basically what I'm saying is that your A value is just going to be M, the carrying capacity, minus the initial population divided by the initial population. That's what that's going to be. Okay, so using these two different um, things, we're going to be able to do some problems using the logistic equation.